One of the things I acquired after my parents died was my mum's promise box. Maybe you have one yourself. Inside are dozens of tiny scrolls, each one curled around a promise of God from scripture. This one that I found says, I will not leave you comfortless. That comes from today's gospel reading. These promise boxes were popular during the last century. My mum kept this on her dressing table and I remember her often picking out and unfurling a promise, presumably seeking some reassurance from God. When my nephew was small, he referred to this as grandma's joke box, maybe because these little scraps of paper resemble the jokes in Christmas crackers. Who knows? The promises in that little box aren't punchlines. They're, if you like, the first and the last line. Promises that sparkle with love and hope and that underline life. Today's gospel bursts with promises from Jesus. One of them is this. I will not leave you orphaned. No one wants to be orphaned. We all want to be known and to be cared for. Even if we have suffered at the hands of abusive parents, we still long for that care from someone, whether we can articulate it or not. I will not leave you orphaned speaks to our fears and challenges of abandonment and loneliness, isolation and vulnerability. Most of us do become orphans in the strict sense of the word. Most of us do lose our parents to death. And then something shifts. Usually a lot shifts. It changes us. Other big life changes can have the effect of making us feel orphaned, leaving us questioning, what do I do now? Who's going to love me and care for me? I will not leave you orphaned, is a promise that connects with us. Jesus says this as part of his goodbye speech before the worst happens. And so we get that Jesus' friends and followers didn't want to be abandoned, that they might be thinking, what will we do if you're not around? Who's going to care for us and teach us? That's why he says he won't leave them, even though he knows he's facing death soon. Within this promise then lies the promise of resurrection. In this goodbye speech Jesus speaks about presence and absence, about coming and going, arriving and leaving. He's about to leave them but he says, I am coming to you, you will see me. We know something of the tension between presence and absence at the moment. Someone is present to us through Zoom, but absent in person. We see someone on a walk and appreciate the presence of another person before us in real life, but we know that it's fleeting, that we can't meet up later in the pub and put the world to rights. He's about to leave them, but he says, I am coming to you and you will see me. This promise wasn't made to an individual, but to a group of people, to his friends, his followers. And it speaks then of the basic nature of needing others, the interdependence of healthy relationship. It speaks of God's valuing of community, that God works through human care and companionship. There we can see the love of God. We've come to rely on community in the last two months, perhaps more than ever before. The illusion of self-sufficiency has faded. We need each other. We bring Christ to one another. The hymn Brother Sister puts this really poignantly. Here are some of the words. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. 
I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. If we hide away, resisting the help of others, we're confining ourselves to an orphanage. When one person is low, another holds out the Christ light, bringing the reminder of God's presence. It's a beautiful thing. Look for it. Notice it. Treasure it. If you still feel drawn to self-sufficiency, maybe because you feel orphaned or you fear being orphaned and are protecting yourself, can you begin to let loving help seep into your fearful heart? In these confusing, frustrating, anxious-making times when hugs are rationed and smiles are distant, when meals and parties and office banter and football matches and chats at the school gate and even the reassuring background buzz of a coffee shop is absent, when so many shared experiences, so much shared humanity is missing or severely restricted, we hold on to the promise of Christ, I will not leave you orphaned. We embrace that promise of Christ in the care that we receive and offer one another. I will not leave you orphaned. Because I live, you also live, promises Jesus. Our living isn't simply surviving, it's fullness of life found in the depths of God's love. When we commune with God, we are nourished. We will share in spiritual communion in a few moments one way to know God's presence with us. And in doing so, we pray, God, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly. We commune with God to be nourished and to be given strength to offer Christ to another This communion with God isn't a private or a secret thing. Even if you live alone and you're praying alone at home, you're part of a huge worshipping community. Jesus' words are all about the communal. The promises he makes aren't made to individuals, but to a community. To members of a community whose life stems from God's love, which flows into their love and care for each other. A community in which none are orphans and all are welcome. Amen.